Now at this stage we've finished the uh, the shadow box portions. Uh, most of all the, the major parts we've created now. So it comes down to just refining the shapes that we've got here, polishing them down, planing them out, and creating a more machined looking finished form based on some of that concept art. So at this stage what I want to do is I want to go ahead and use my side view image as a background here in ZBrush just so I can have it as reference. Uh, we're no longer going to be bringing in the shadow box. I want to take that same image and drop it in the background. Now there's a couple different ways you can do this. You can do that using shadow box, or excuse me, you can do that using um, the texture menu tool spotlight, dropping an image in the background that way. Or you can use under the texture menu, there's a plugin that you can install called Image Plane. Now I don't have it installed here, I'm going to show you how to actually run that installation now. So the first thing you're going to want to do is open up a browser window and you're going to want to go to Pixelogic's website, pixelogic.com. At ZBrush's website, pixelogic.com, at the top of the screen, you should find uh, Support Download Center. We'll go to the Download Center, and then you want to click on ZBrush Plugins here. In the ZBrush Plugin menu, you're going to find, or Plugin section, you're going to find several different uh, bits available, several different uh, plugins available. The one that you want is called Image Plane, and it's right here. And I'm going to download it for PC. And once that's completed, we're going to unzip the archive, and I'll show you how to actually run the installation. So the, the download is complete. It's a very small plugin. I'm going to go ahead and extract it here. Now what you get is you end up with a Zscript file a readme and that's all and a data folder excuse me so what you want to do is you want to take the data folder and the zscript you can get rid of the text of the readme file and the original archive i'm going to take the data folder and the zscript file it's important that you get both of these i'm going to copy those and i'm going to go to c program files Pixelogic, ZBrush 4. There is a Z startup folder in here. Go to Z startup. And then in Z startup, there is a Z plugs folder. We'll open that. And this is where all of your plugins go. I'm going to right click and paste that data folder and the zscript file here into this folder. There's the data file, data folder, and the Z plugin. Now what happens is when ZBrush starts up, it looks into this Z plugs folder for zscript files. And if it finds a zscript file, if it, the zscript file references a data folder, it looks for the data folder and then it's ready to load. It does not look in folders. So if I were to take this folder and this file and put it into a subfolder here called image plane, it wouldn't work. And that's convenient because you can actually temporarily disable plugins that might be causing you problems by just creating a disabled folder and then dragging the zscript and the data folder into that subfolder. That way you can temporarily turn plugins off if you need to for technical reasons. But it's important to note when you're installing plugins to make sure that you don't put them in a subfolder. They need to be in the root zplugs folder. So there we go. It is now installed. All I need to do is restart my ZBrush. Make sure that I've saved my work. Now I'm going to pause and restart ZBrush and we'll take a look at the texture menu when I come back and you'll see that the plugin will be available. So here we are back in ZBrush. If I go to the texture menu you see we now have an image plane folder. So if I click load image 
and I'll browse to Shadowbox, User Files, and I'll just select the Gun Ref. Actually, no. Let's go back to Shadowbox. I want to make sure because the Gun Ref Shadowbox file here I don't want to use. I'm actually going to want to use the Side View Image Plane. So I'm going to go back up here to Photoshop. and open my side view image. This is the image that I want to use. So back here, set this to JPEG, go back to the shadow box root folder, and here we go, side view. I'm going to drag the side view into the user file so it's there for you on the DVD. Select side view, and there it loads right into the image view, or right into the, um, the document window. So I'm going to line this up now. I want to make sure that the, uh, the the gun lines up with the reference image. So the easiest way to do that is I'm going to select the little handle at the top, make sure that this is my active subtool up here. There we go. I'm going to turn on transparency. Make sure local is turned on, so it, the, the last place that I touch with the brush is the point that it's going to scale around. So I just touched this corner of the handle here, and it's scaling around that corner. I'm going to line this corner up with the corner of the handle, and then I'm going to scale right there. Maybe down just a tiny bit. There we go. So I've got my reference lined up with my gun. Now I need to store this position. Now there's a couple ways that I can do that. If I want to store the position using the image plane tool, I just click reference views. And if I want to store a view for the front, I just click store view. And now my view is stored. So if I were to move off of this image, all I'd have to do is come back up to the texture menu under reference views, just click front. and it'll store the view. Ooh. Mm, that actually didn't store the view. Let's try that again. Let's scale this. There we go. Now it's stored. So if I were to accidentally rotate off this view, I can go to Texture and click Front, and it'll bring me back to that front view. If I want, I can go over here to Right, and I can load up a different image per view. So you see, if I go to the front view, I've got this view saved. Technically, the front view is staring down the barrel, but uh, just for the sake of ease, I've just made it the first button here. So if I wanted to store other views, I can do that just by selecting the back view, for example, loading up a different image plane, and then positioning the model on top of that. Now there's another way that I could store uh, model position, and that's by going to Movie, Timeline, and click Show Timeline and I can store my position just by adding a little keyframe here. So for example, if I accidentally move off position now, all I need to do is drag this timeline slider and it brings it should bring me back. Go 
got a couple keyframes here now, so if I were to move off, all I have to do is drag my timeline back. And there we go. Now all I need to do is just add two keyframes when I'm in position. Now this keyframe will actually store with my project settings if I save my project. So I go to File, Save As, the keyframes will store um, as well as the document image. If I go to Texture, under the reference views, if I click Save Load, it asks if I want to save and load my reference views. If I click Save, I'll save the reference views here. So I'll just call this, and I'll save this with my projects under the ZTools folder. I'll save reference views. And I'll go to File, Save As, and I'll save my project. So the project isn't going to save your reference views. You've got to remember that. So you have to save your reference views separately, or you'll need to use the timeline to set a keyframe, and those will save with your project. So if I close and reopen ZBrush, I'll show you what happens. And here we go reloaded ZBrush, turn off the light box, and you can see that my project comes up and my model is still there in the correct position lined up to the photo reference. If I go to the transform, or excuse me, go to the texture menu, go to image plane, reference views, you'll notice that these have reset now. They're not the same as they were. If I want to reload these, I'll have to go to save load and click load and just load up my reference views. Now that brings my reference views back here. Now the only reason you'd really need to save these reference views is if you've got multiple views with multiple bits of photo reference stored. Because I'm only using one side view here, I can do that just by saving it with the, um, the, the project file and using the keyframes.